a lonely man living in a church happened to find a cardboard model of his city. He found the church where he lived, and even himself. He decided to spray water on the church and miraculously, it started to rain outside. He couldn't believe it, so he tried again and it rained harder. That s when the man realized that the city model was magic. Just one year before, front page news in a small rural town of Littleton reported that the new mayor, Trina Grant, had died in a car accident. The locals loved Trina very much as she was the leader of the vote that banned the expansion of a freeway, making the town more comfortable, famous and attractive to tourists. She outvoted John Conley, a vocal proponent of the freeway extension that would cut Littleton off the main road and bring local life to a halt. It is most likely that Grant's death will let her rival achieve the goal of constructing the new road. Now Trina's grieving husband receives heartfelt condolences from the relatives, those close to him, and the whole community. A year later, we see a rather gloomy picture, there are rubbish in the streets, closed signs on shop windows, and local residents are leaving their hometown because of unemployment. Ironically, we see all of this against the background of the road sign Welcome to Littleton. As if nothing is wrong, the new mayor John Conley walks around the town with his wife and greets rare passers-by with a smile. One of such residents is S a young guy named Emilio. He turns towards the local church and goes up to the attic where Trina's widowed husband named Jason lives. He has been living a reclusive life since his wife's death and Emilio visits him from time to time. On this occasion, he brought candles and cakes to Jason as well as his new funny caricature pictures. Jason finds himself in those pictures and also Mayor Conley. He laughs, praises Emilio's talents and advises him to continue. In turn, Emilio asks Jason why he is living in this depressing attic in a church. He says that after his wife's death, he can no longer live in their former house, while a pastor lets him live here as long as he helps out. While on his way out, the lad asks whether he is feeling closer to God. Jason thinks hard about this and remembers that Pastor Nikki visited him after his wife's death. She always supported the grieving husband and helped him move forward. In gratitude, he offered her help in cleaning up the cluttered attic of the church. While Jason is busy cleaning, he comes across a strange board with the exact replica of their city. This replica is so detailed that it contains even the smallest things of the real city, including the holes and cracks in the ground. Having looked closer, Jason notices some mechanism under the board and tries to make it work. The gears start turning, a light appears in the windows and the town comes to life. Jason is thrilled when he suddenly becomes shocked. Having looked into the attic window of the church, he notices his own small figure. This is exactly where he is right now. To see himself a bit clearer, Jason sprays some water onto their window. As soon as he does that, he sees that there is actual drizzling outside the window. He comes to understand what is happening very quickly. He sprays even more water and observes how the rain outside becomes more and more strong. He puts out his hand still finding it hard to believe his own eyes. Sometime later, Jason is sitting in a local restaurant and carefully listens to the customer's discussion of the rain, which was very weird and seemed to be happening in just one place. The restaurant owner tends to Jason in a friendly manner and complains of a lack of customers because of the road construction. Despite this, she treats Jason generously to coffee and in a businesslike manner instructs her son Emilio to paint the facade of the restaurant. Sarcastically, Emilio replies that this must certainly solve all their current problems. At this moment, Jason takes out his notebook and writes down the task that has been given. At night, after isolating himself up in the attic, he uses nail polish to make Emilio's life slightly easier and paints the facade of the restaurant using the replica of the town. The next morning, Jason walks around the restaurant, as if nothing happened, while a surprised crowd is already gathered there. Emilio assures his mother that he had nothing to do with it. But the mother is appalled. This has been done without her persimmon since the building belongs to the mayor and he might not like the orange walls. Jason notes, however, that it looks rather well and adds some brightness to this gray scenery. What is more, this isn't orange but a peach color. Emilio's mother agrees and relaxes a bit. While on his way out of the church the next morning, Jason notices a poster showing Conley's election campaign. He carelessly takes it off the church fence and throws it away. At this moment, Jason hears a loud cry of an elderly woman who has twisted her ankle because of the big hole in the ground. He helps the lady and listens to the complaints of the older population about this eternal hole and other problems of this city. They point at a suggestion box installed for the mayor and note that it must have been ages since he looked in there last time. With no more words needed, Jason understands right away what it is that he needs to do and takes the suggestion box to his attic. Immediately, all the problems of the town are being easily solved. The holes are mended, the rubbish is cleared away, the roads get cleaned up, and even an angry hungry dog receives a bone from Jason's plate which appeared enormous in the real world. The next morning, Jason is happily walking around the town and enjoys the resident's positive reaction to all the good changes that happened overnight. Having entered the restaurant, he sees the mayor reproaching Emilio and his mothers for the color that wasn't approved by him. Jason interrupts the conversation and puts the mayor into an awkward position by reminding him about his deceased wife. Jason then visits a shop where he overhears the customer's conversation about the problems that have been solved in this town. According to them, it might not be necessary to leave since everything is improving. Jason supports the conversation about the positive changes and adds that it seems that the town has a guarding angel now. The man from the shop believes that Mayor Conley is that angel. It is obvious that this is all thanks to him and they need to vote for him in the next re-election. Jason obviously doesn't like the sound of this and notes that this isn't going to be re-election but rather an election. Because the previous mayor, that is his wife, died in the middle of her term, and so Conley wasn't chosen but got his office just like that. The woman nearby says that it doesn't matter how Conley became the mayor if he is doing his job. The man agrees with her and offers Jason to drink for the mayor's health, but he politely refuses and leaves. When the night descends, Jason once again works on the replica, thinking about how to increase the tourist attractiveness of the city. Jason constructs a huge glowing sign that says Littleton, America's smallest magical city. 
And now the city is filled with tourists. There is a line at the gas station, and you can't squeeze through the parking lot of the restaurant. The spirits of the population clearly improved with even the Sunday Mass being overcrowded. Pastor Nikki happily greets everyone she hasn't seen for a long time and points out that they have gathered today to celebrate a series of wonders that return their town to life. She doesn't know who this mysterious helper is, but she is certain that he needs to be thanked. Some of the parishioners cry out that it must be the new mayor. Conley's spouse asks her husband if it was really him, but he just shrugs his shoulders. The pastor says that whoever that is, he has taken responsibility for his friends, neighbors, and the entire town. This mysterious helper paints the buildings, fixes roads, clears away the rubbish, and attracts the tourists. Many express their gratitude to Conley, but Jason doesn't like what is happening. That night, Jason decides to punish the imposter and throws a small stone on the roof of his sports car. In reality, a huge meteorite falls from the sky, which is big enough to land on Conley's car and flatten it. Conley's scream emerges in the town center in the early morning. A gathered crowd is in shock, wondering about the odds of the meteorite landing exactly on his car. But Conley doesn't believe it was an accident and suspects that he is being bullied by someone in the town. Conley notices Emilio, who has been laughing hard and takes away his notebook where he sees a picture of his car with a stone on the roof. The mayor starts screaming and blames the guy for everything, but his mother stands up for him and demands evidence. People support them and decide to leave, but Conley gives a passionate speech about his good intentions and returns the good disposition of his people. Having noticed how Conley is walking around on his own, Jason decides to teach him a lesson and puts a huge spider onto the replica. Emilio wakes up to the sound of his powerful steps and observes this enormous monster from the window. Conley, who doesn't suspect anything, also hears someone's loud footsteps, raises his head and suddenly realizes that a huge creature is moving towards him from around the corner. He falls and screams in horror, but the spider suddenly flies up into the sky in diapers, leaving Conley lying in complete shock and confusion in the middle of the empty street. Meanwhile, Jason is completely satisfied as he puts the spider back in a jar. The next morning, Conley walks with the pastor and complains to her that someone is constantly testing his faith and tries to play a trick on him. Conley then notices Emilio when he is painting a huge spider on the wall. He grabs him and asks him if he saw it tonight. The guy smirks, which annoys the mayor even more. In the evening, Pastor Nikki visits Jason but he stops her at the doorstep, to keep the replica a secret. She says that she worries about Jason's state. According to her, things are improving in the city and there are enough reasons now to have a more positive mood. Jason asks the pastor not to give Conley any credit because he is too selfish and greedy to help anyone. But the pastor replies that anyone can return to the right path. At night, Jason decides to improve the lighting by adding more light bulbs and signs. But the weak lighting system can't maintain it and the city plunges into darkness. Residents of the town gather for an emergency meeting in the church by candlelight and demand the restoration of the electricity supply. The mayor reports the problems to be very serious. The city's power plant failed because of the new lighting. It will be repaired, of course, but it may take weeks. One of the old ladies says that she lives only thanks to the oxygen apparatus which is powered by electricity. Other people argue further and demand that the mayor fixes the issue immediately. After all, it was he who put up all those new signs. But the mayor says that he has no idea who did it. People do not believe Conley. They intend to pounce on him. But he runs out into the yard. He notices Emilio back in the street again while he is drawing and snatches a notebook from him in which he finds a painted sign of the town. Conley tries to explain to the crowd that the whole thing is the guy's work. He draws everything that happens in the city, which means that it's some kind of witchcraft. The people refuse to believe the mayor and attack him. But then Jason suddenly intervenes and confesses everything. According to him, he did not want anything bad to happen. He simply wanted to help the town and everyone who lives there. But things don't always go according to plan. People ask for proof and Jason demonstrates some wonders from his attic. After that, he takes off his gold wedding ring and places it next to a photograph of his dead wife, saying that he failed her. At that moment, the mayor breaks in with his people and learns Jason's secret. Conley is delighted with the potential that this replica has and decides to turn the town into the second Vegas. Jason replies that he won't let him do it, and a small fight begins, during which the replica topples over and falls. In the real city, devastation also reigns, and the inhabitants are now wondering about the way to restore it all now. Looking at his huge wedding ring in the middle of the street, Jason reassures the residents by saying that they already have the means to do so. The journalists on the scene already report on the largest single piece of gold ever found. Thank you all for watching, subscribe to the channel, give us your likes, suggest your films in the comments, and we will try to please you with high quality content as often as possible. See you soon.